Granule nerves. Right, we've got granule nerves from 1 to 12. Let's start with 1. So, what is the first granule nerve's name? Olfactory. Olfactory, and what does it now do? It's for smell. And what does it what is it called if you cannot smell? An osmia. So what's the most common reason for an osmia? Well, the common cold, eh? <laughs> Any other suggestions? Um, a skull fracture. Yes. So I was building up to that. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, where must the skull fracture be for you to get an osmia? Mm -hmm. um, Paranox and statutal anterior posterior. <laughs> what is that area just under the frontal lobe? <laughs> Above your eyes. The orbital frontal oh. area. Hey. So that orbital frontal area is where the cribriform plate is, no? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so the cribriform plate is where the little fibers of the uh, first cranial nerve or factory cranial nerve run through. And if you have a fracture of the anterior skull base, anterior skull base fractures, you break those little fibers off. And you can't smell, and you can never smell. So, an osmia comes with anterior skull base fractures. Um, and the important thing here is you must check if the dura is torn as well. Right. So how will you know that the dura is torn? If the patient's an osmia, it doesn't mean that the dura is already also torn. Okay? How will you know that the dura is torn? Mm -hmm. Can't you? The cerebral spinal fluid will leak. So if somebody has got, a, if he bumped his head in a car accident and now he can't smell, you must check if there's CSF leaking from his nose. Because if you have CSF leaking out of your nose, you can also get all the infections that all the organisms in your nose can go into your brain and you get meningitis. Very important to ask for CSF leak. Okay, CSF leak. Where was I now? How do you determine? Oh, thank you. How do you determine the difference between nasal secretions and CSF? Now the tissue thing doesn't help. Because you can really have, uh, if you, in the beginning of a cold, you can have something like running water from your nose, eh? So how do you know it's uh, not running water, it's CSF? Maybe the consistency? Nope. Color? <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, you get different colors of CSF, eh? It can also be yellow. It's called xanthochromia. Mm -hmm. hmm? You do a urine dipstick and you check for glucose. CSF has got glucose. CSF has glucose. All right. And ask me, so anterior skull base fractures, how do you test for the first cranial nerve? You take something that is not alcoholic. Don't take hand spray or disinfectant. You just take something like a cigarette that you don't, don't uh, light it. You rub the tobacco between your fingers and you ask, can you close the one nose? Can you hear? Can you feel? Can you <laughs> smell? <laughs> can you smell? Or you take coffee powder and you do that. Okay, that doesn't be something that you can taste the same time. Alright, and then you have to look in the nostrils and see if you find any foreign objects there, especially in children. Okay. So, anterior skull base fractures is the one reason for an osmia, neurological reason for an osmia. The other reason is if you look at your brain with the frontal lobe is there and, and the eyes are at the bottom here and you have dura that, grow, that, that runs in between there. So if you have a, something that grows in the meninges, we call it a meningioma, so an orbital rich meningioma, and it grows and grows and grows, and it's hormone sensitive, so uh, yeah, it can get bigger when, when somebody gets pregnant. So uh, anterior orbital rich meningioma 
can also give anosmia. Hey, if you close it in and it goes the little fibers of the olfactory nerve off. So how will the patient look with a big frontal lobe meningioma? Urbac anosmic. Will they care? They won't really know. Hey. They will just stand there and, and burn the food and not be aware that the food is burning. So they obviously have anosmia. And then sometimes they present with convulsions. So these patients have raised into cranial pressure and then they have papilledema on the one side and optic atrophy on the other side. I don't really know how they worked it out, but they think that uh, uh, maybe it's the asymmetric raised into cranial pressure or pressure on the optic nerve already. So they've got optic atrophy on the one side, papilledema on the other side, and they have an osmia. And this is called foster Kennedy syndrome. And it's typical of a frontal lobe in a geoma. You don't have to know, know the name, so why? But you must know that you get a syndrome of anosmia, and you must ask the patient or the family about changes in personality um, and look in the eyes for optic uh, atrophy or disc swelling. Okay, so those are the two reasons for anosmia. Second cranial nerve. And usually you won't do it routinely to test uh, this. Uh, uh, smell, you, but you can just ask, can you smell, is everything okay, maybe check in the nose usually with the oven, but you don't normally um, do all these cranial nerves unless somebody complains about it. And if the patient is admitted at neurology, obviously you start from the top of the ear, 